Hello and welcome to my series, Keep Psalms and Carry On, Seeking Solace in the Psalms. If you like this series, please consider hitting the like button at the bottom. Also, check out this YouTube page for Sunday morning services, which stream live, as well as our Sunday morning Bible studies, which also stream live. We also, on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., we have another service with our minister, Mark. I ask you to today to focus on a psalm and to enjoy this psalm as we would enjoy songs or poetry to bring us peace. My point in these videos is not so much to explain, but to give you my impression and invite you to meditate upon it yourself, to find your own calm and peace in God's word. So let's begin with a prayer. Our Lord and Father, we thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. Bless us now with clarity and strength of mind. Bless us with serenity and the capacity to know you and feel your presence in us. Be with us now as we meditate upon the word you have given us. It is in your son's most holy name that I pray, amen. All right, so what I'm gonna look at today is Psalm 8, which I want us to meditate upon us. Now, this is a great one to look at the parallel that is used to bookend this, making this more like a prayer or a chant. It begins and ends the same way. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. His glory is above the heavens. It is a praise to the majesty of God above the heavens. Yet that is not exactly where this psalm continues to go. Look at the next line. Out of the mouths of babes. I'm sure you've heard that one before. In our modern context, we use it to point out how wisdom can come from those young that we take not as wise yet normally. But that's not exactly what this psalm says here, is it? It's telling us that God has given strength to those considered weakest, those who some other translations in this line take as babbling. God has given the greatest power to the weakest and most helpless and least eloquent humans who haven't even yet developed speech. Why? To silence the enemy and the avenger, it says. How does that silence the devil? Well, how does the devil work? He works through wiles, through speech, through tricks. It started with Adam and Eve. He used his wiles to trick Eve to taste of the fruit that was forbidden by God. How can he use tricks like these on babies who do not even have the comprehension of speech? Maybe this can be a, can be a meditation on getting back to the innocence, to get away from the wiles and tricks that can be part of eloquence. Obfuscation, there's a big word for you, to use speech to obscure things, to double talk. Do we always use words for what they were intended to communicate truth? Sometimes we don't. Now consider next David looking at the works of God's fingers, the moon and the stars. Isn't it a fantastic image here of God's fingers fashioning the moon and the stars? And what is God mindful of? Man, even the son of man, the son of the first man, Adam. It's looking at us humbly, we who are children of the one who first disappointed God and betrayed him. Yet he honored us, crowns us with glory, given us dominion over the creatures here on earth. This is a reason to consider him excellent. So when we come back around to saying, our Lord, how excellent is your name? We understand where his excellence comes from. He sees our strength in our innocence, trusted us with his creation. And this is not something to puff us up with pride but to humbly accept this dominion. Meditate upon this. Let this psalm run in your head a few times. Use this to truly understand the greatness of God 
and the importance of humility and the responsibility we have for what has been entrusted to us. So something to think about until next time. Keep Psalms and carry on.